Welcome to another session of Trimming the Lamb. I'm Pastor Moses Alu, the pastor of the Bride Assembly Church and a teacher of the Word. It's our attempt to respond to what this scripture says, the Lord Jesus Christ, using the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25 and from verse 1. And he said, then, future, future. I always like to stress this whenever I read this verse. It's not then, it is then. Shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were fully took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. That is what we are doing, trimming the lamb. They all arose and trimmed their lambs. And the lamb here is the word of God, as I tried to bring out in the last episode. The lamb is the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. The part of the joy is as the shining light that shining brighter and brighter until the perfect day. Where the word of God is, illumination comes in and darkness disappears. And uh, to trim the lamp here, remember it was at midnight and we have tried to explain that, that that comes under the third seal, the darkest hour of the Christian faith, when Christianity and paganism merged to uh, produce the dark ages that's depicted by the black horse rider in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 5 and verse 6. Uh, so the response to that shout, behold, the bridegroom cometh. The response is trimming the lamb. And that is exactly what we are doing to trim the revelation. Because during the dark ages, a lot of confusion took place. A lot of confusion took place in Christian faith until the proper picture of the church that Jesus reestablished on the day of Pentecost and in the first church age. And as we see in the Bible, the New Testament church was totally distorted. And so, a lot of revelations need to be trimmed. And some of us, even in this age, when we say we are following a message, we too, we've gone off left and right, up and down, and there is need for God to bring back the perfecting ministry for the perfecting of the saints. And I'm part of this perfecting ministry. So let's trim the lamp. We've been taking them topic by topic. For today, we'll be looking at what the Bible says concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will title it the second coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ. Is Christ coming? Yes. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 4, helps us to understand he is coming. When Jesus Christ said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. That's the scripture I'm looking for. That's the word. I will come again. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. So he is coming. He certainly is coming. There's a way it is put in Acts chapter 1, verse 11. When Christ was, they saw him being lifted up. And the an angel of God appeared to them as they stood they were guessing. The angel appeared, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up unto heaven? Into heaven. This same Jesus, verse 11. This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So he will come. The emphasis there is he will come. He will come. 
And so Apostle Paul, in the first church age, they were all expecting the coming of the Lord. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse, from verse 1, from the language put here, everybody in the first church age, they were expecting the coming of the Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letters from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Which day? It is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to take us home. It is that coming that we are expecting. And if you look at one more scripture, maybe Luke chapter 10 and verse 30 to 35, the parable of the, the Samaritan. And we know the good Samaritan. You know that it is the story of redemption. And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. That is the story of man. We stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a leper, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But that is the law could not help man. That is all it means. But a certain Samaritan that rejected man. As he journey came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion over him. I went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The inn there is the church. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, my emphasis, when I come again, I will repay thee. So Jesus is coming again. And in another parable, just to stress the fact that, yes, we are not believing in vain. Scriptures assure us it's coming back. In Luke chapter 19, verse 11 to verse 15. Luke chapter 19. And as they heard these things, he added his, and spoke a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem. Because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return, to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come, till I come, till I come. But the citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, you see, he's returning. And this man is the Lord Jesus Christ. Having received the kingdom, then he commanded his servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. When we talk about the coming of the Lord Jesus, it's one of the very confused doctrines in Christendom. Because of the way certain scriptures are put, you hear pastors in some of these denominations teaching that the day that Christ will come, there will be confusion. Yes, there will be confusion because there are three comings of the Lord. The first coming was to come and pay the price for redemption and deliver the word of salvation to us. He has done that. He has gone. And he's at the mercy seat waiting for every elect to come in. The next one is coming is what we are expecting now. Those he has redeemed. He's going to take them away from this earth because judgment is going to come upon this earth. This second one will not be known, will not be seen by men. It is the third one. The Bible says, all eyes shall see him. It is that third coming. When he will be coming to judge this earth. And he will not be only him, he will be coming together with us. That is when the Bible says, man, we see they will run to hide. Hey, for fear of what they will see. But this coming of the Lord that we are expecting, that we call rapture. The Bible says, 
that it will be like it was in the days of Noah, Luke 17. I think from verse 26 up to verse 37. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. That is the coming of the Lord. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. When Noah entered the ark, did they know? They didn't know. Just did they know? They didn't know. Adams, they didn't know. Bride of Christ, they didn't know. They didn't even understand what was going on. They did eat, so they were continuing their party, party, living their life normally. They were building their houses. They were planting, you know, doing, just carrying on their lives normally. Verse 27, again. He said, he said, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. The flood came only after Noah entered the ark, but they also saw the flood that came to destroy them. Then verse 28 says, Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Listen, even well, uh, Lot, when he was living in the city, did they know, did they know anybody, to, how many people are living in the city? They didn't know. Because they didn't know, life continued. Life continued in their iniquity while God was saving his few elect. He said, even though shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed concerning the coming of the Lord. I want you to note something. Therefore, it will not be by any form of confusion. Buses will be knocking each other. Automobiles will be clashing on the streets. Okada will hit Okada. Keke will hit Okeke. Pilots, aircraft will be jamming themselves. What happened? Pilot has gone in the rapture. Oh, suddenly I'm just looking at, like, uh, 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 this is Justin. Then, you know, pew, like that film depicts. A pew, and then you are gone. It's not like that, oh. It's not like that, oh. Okay. You, 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 you will see from this clip, you will see from this clip we want to show you that it is not like that. Pirr, they change. Pirr, cloth, they change. Pirr, it's not like that, oh. It will not be like that. It is a secret catching away. It's a wrong presentation from a wrong understanding of what the coming of the Lord will look like. How will he come? Verse 31. In that day, he which shall be upon the house top and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. He said, remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. And this is where I am going now. A lot of issues compressed here in what Luke is saying. I tell you, in that night, so you can see, and Adams, it looks like the rapture will take place in the night. <laughs> well, remember that he's just using it symbolically. Because remember that from the setting you will see as we shall read, this country, I mean, the world is such that while some people are in darkness, some are in light, some are day, some are night. So he put it here clearly. I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. That will not be in the night. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men 
shall be in the field, so it can't be in the night. The one shall be taken and the other left. And see where I am going now, to understand all he was saying. And they answered and said unto him, We are Lord. And see the answer. That's why we need the spirit of revelation. And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, data will the eagles be gathered together. So the emphasis is, you'll be taken to where? It is about the gathering. He said, wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered. And that will make you understand how Christ will come. It, the description of this carcass is given again to understand it in Matthew 24. In Matthew 24, verse 23, up to verse 28. Then, future, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ, anointed ones, and false prophet teachers, and shall show great signs and wonders. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Please permit me to explain this verse again. Please permit me to explain this verse again. For there shall arise false prophets, false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. My emphasis here, they will show they will show, they will show great signs and wonders. Great signs and wonders. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. You see, there is a usage of a language that helps us to understand pictures that the Bible wants to convey. Now, let's pause here and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. This is Apostle Paul. Listen. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Now, there are two words here. Apostle Paul said these signs were wrought. But Matthew 24 says, this they will show. There is a showing. Matthew 24, 24. It says, it says they will show. There is showing and there is a rothing. Oh, glory be to God. Now, this is the meaning of show. Hey. Brother Wale, church, as I was just coming from the house to the church now, I reached Ijesha. I saw a man that twisted like a monkey. And I said, I stopped. In the name of Jesus, be healed. And he got entangled and became very healed. Crowd gathered there. And they knew and they glorified the name of the Lord. Now listen. Did you see it? You didn't see it. He is only giving you testimony. He is showing you. They call it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he called it lying wonders. He call it lying wonders. So, so in this age, and I have seen that very common in some of these pastors that we respect so much, even in this, in this country, Nigeria. They stand and begin to tell you mighty, mighty testimonies that happened, which year we are in America, I was a person, I was the, somebody did this, and they became pregnant. And this one. But right before you in the eye, there you are not seeing anything. That is one of the identities of a false prophet. And you won't see any testimony. He is the one giving the testimony. It's not the people that received 
the miracle that are coming to give testimony. And they are there standing there. You never watch them live like this, performing any miracle. That is the difference between showing mighty signs and wonders and rotting miracles. Before your eyes, you will see it. You will see it. The lying wonders is in um, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, even him whose coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. All, they are all lies. Now, if you go back to where we were reading, verse 24 of Matthew 24, you see what it says. For there shall arise false. Nothing to confirm what they are saying. Only what they are saying, their people are believing it. False. Christ, false anointing. False prophets. And they will show, show, show great signs and wonders. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Because they package themselves and make you respect them so much. And when they are talking, they will be acting spirituality. Let me not, so that you will not begin to think that, uh, that, that uh, I'm having any particular person in mind. But he says, in verse 25, Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. He said, Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. He said, Believe it not. Remember, I'm trying to explain where the Bible says in Luke 17, it says, where will this take place? One will go, one will stay behind. He says, he says that we are, the answer, he answers, he well, we are the carcass. It's there the eagles will gather. That's what I'm trying to explain. The next verse, verse 27, for as the lightning, this is how you will come, coming out of the east and shining even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And so, the second coming of the Lord, I want to emphasize, it is first and foremost, it's a secret catching away. Nobody will know it is happening. Now, one will be taken, one will be left. What is he talking about? He's talking about two groups of believers. The two of them, we are all prepared now. But one was foolish and one was wise. He's talking about the foolish and the wise virgins that will exist in every age. And what makes you wise or foolish is determined by your response to the first stage of the ministry, of, of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That takes us to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. The three stages. Number one, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That is how he will come. Each one is a period of God doing something. With the voice of the archangel, it's another period. With the trump of God, another period of an activity that culminates into our home going. And when that is completed, then the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, the dead in Christ, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And he said, wherefore comfort one another with these words, but be comforted you can only be truly comforted if you catch a revelation of what it means. If you just take it literally, hey, pa, 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 hey, hey, and there's no confusion. Nothing like that, oh, nothing like that. The shout there is that revival message, that revival message that brings out those who were locked up in the dark ages in error, on that, the black horse right there in, in the third seal of Revelation chapter 6, verse 5. 
and 6. They were the darkest hour of Christianity. That period depicted by that black horse, there will be a revival at the end, verse 6 and verse 7. The last statement there, it says, and see, thou hot not the oil and the wine. The oil and the wine, I've always been saying it here, is that revival. And it was a revival to restore back all you know, the doctrines that were lost, particularly the three works of grace that were corrupted and totally destroyed, which is what is depicted by the corn plant, the seed that was planted, the parable. In Mark chapter 4, verse 27, it says, it will begin to grow up. It died first, then it began to grow up. How it will happen, don't worry. Verse 28, now, the first stage the, that, that comes out of that seed that was planted, when it's supposed to come out, it is the response, it's speaking about the response of that shout, that revival. The first, it, the first thing that comes out is the blade. So justification came out. The air, sanctification came out. After the full corn in the air, the Holy Ghost baptism, the restoration of the gifts came out, which are the three measures of me that were destroyed. But when the fruit is brought forth, because there's still another work, there are other loose hands that shall be, taught, that shall be put together. It's another, the fourth ministry there for the, the whole seed that was planted to be formed again. The church that was planted, that was destroyed, will be formed again. And it is the ministry for perfection. And God used man in this age. That is why under the third seal is the face as a man. That beast that says, come and see. So he used Luther for justification. He used Wesley for sanctification. He used Simon, William Simon, for the restoration of the gifts we all know, which has produced the Pentecostalism movement today. But... There was a need for the first stage. He raised a man, William Marion Branham, and he came with the loose ends to be tied together with the perfecting ministry, which produced the fivefold ministry of Ephesians 4.11 because it must be there for the perfect seed to be produced. And so now, but this is where one is taken, one is dropped. If you claim that you saw the revival of Luther, and you were truly part of it, he's moving. The rapture is moving from shouting from hell to glory. You see, the shout first is to bring you out. Come up, hitter. Come up, hitter. We are moving up. We are moving up. We are moving up. They move you from, just, from the dark ages. You moved out. We are on our way from earth to glory. We move now. We are going to get more power. More power is added to the church. Sanctification. You refuse to move. You are that man, two of you on the bed of sanctification. Let's go back to that scripture again. Uh, Luke chapter 17, where he says, two women shall be granted. What is 34? Yes. I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. That bed... Is the bed of restora restoration. One will be taken, the other will be left. All of you say we believe Luther. We believe Luther. Now more power, more revelation is coming. Then you refuse to move to sanctification. You are those two women that shall be grinding together. One shall be taken and the other will be left. Because you are moving higher. Now they want to restore the gift. You say, no, we are sanctification, sanctified people. We are Wesleyans. We don't want the gift. We don't want the speaking in tongues. We don't want any manifestation. On Azusa Street, the spirit comes down. Two shall be in the field, preaching sanctification up and down. One shall be taken and the other left. It's revelation. It's revelation. That is why he said, wheresoever the carcass is, the body is, there will the eagle be gathered. Where the word is, the three elect will find themselves there. And the third thing he says, as the lightning 
traveling from the east to the west, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. He's using the sun to depict the light of God. And if you look at the history, you will see how the gospel started in the east, in Israel, and kept moving to Europe, Britain, Europe. Look at where the gospel started from Israel, moved over, it died by the time it came to the Gentiles. By the time it is going to be, to, to be resurrecting again, it is going to resurrect in the hand of the Gentiles because it is continuing the journey. And by the time we come to 1906, after John Wesley, the, the gospel landed in the West America. And in America, God used that black man, Simon. And that is how the gospel will move. The light of the gospel will finish shining in the west because the sun goes down in the west. The next time the sun, the world will come again, the world will come up again, will be in the Jewish revival, referred to as the John revival, John ministry in Revelation chapter 10 verse 11. That will take place in Revelation chapter 10 verse 11 where it said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. If you say that must prophesy again, it means they prophesied before. It was the Jews. Remember that on the day of Pentecost, it was all Jews. But they rejected him, so he turned to the Gentiles. But he's telling John, you prophesy again. And that will come up after the sun ends, the light of God, the word of God ends in the West. And that is why the perfecting ministry was in the West. The full calm in the air, which is Pentecost, was in the West. That is where the activity is rounding up. The rapture will take place, then it will go uh, to the fourth seal in Revelation chapter 6 and uh, I think verse 7 and 8. Now, so where the carcass is, where the carcass is, there the eagles will be guarded. We will, will be gathered together. So, the first stage of the rapture is the shout, which is actually that midnight cry of Matthew 25, verse 6. Like I said, it is the revival of that third seal. The rapture does not take place yet. Let me line it very well. Before the rapture takes place, under that shout, under that shout, at the end of that shout, the next stage before the rapture is that voice of the archangel. With the voice, remember there are three stages, the shout. But as the shout is ending, after the shout is ended, it's not yet a rapture. There will be the voice of the archangel. Which archangel and which voice? It is in Revelation chapter 10, verses 1 to 6. It says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right hand upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roared, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that they are in, and the earth and the things that they are in are, and the sea and the things which are there in, that there should be time no longer. And so we will look at the voice of the archangel, which is 
the second thing that will take place before the rapture, because it is the trump that culminates in the rapture. But what is this voice of the archangel? We will take a look at it after this break. Stay tuned and shalom. <laughs>